All right, let's get into this Atlas thing because this is pretty cool. Yeah. So, um, Atlas Comics, and we'll talk about a little bit about the history of it too because it's kind of confusing for people. Some people are kind of like crossing streams, so to speak, you know, in their stories. Yeah, we'll clear that up. So, there's a library of characters, um, and they were acquired by this guy named Stephen Paul, who uh, was the producer for Ghost Rider. You, you've seen that all over the news, which is pretty cool. Um, he's going to be teaming up with Paramount Studios to produce these movies. Um, they're actually going to be fast tracking. They wanted to, oh, Paramount's going to develop them, produce them, and then also distribute them, right? But they want to start actually filming at the beginning of next year, yep. first quarter of 2020, uh, with the first release sometime in uh, 2021, which is really fast. Um, they were talking about, like, um, you have Akiva uh, Goldsman on, who did, like, Star Trek, a whole bunch of other stuff. You can check out his IMDb. He's done a lot of stuff around this. Some stuff that's great, some not very good. But he's very familiar, you know, um, with this type of property. He was basically talking about how it's awesome to have this opportunity. There's, like, tons of uh, these characters, superheroes, uh, sci-fi, uh, horror, um, cops, like, war, yep. all different genres for it. Um, so there's like a very large variety of the content that, um, that they have, um, which is pretty cool. Right. Yep. Um, so basically, okay. So this is going to kind of rewind like way back to way, way back to the golden age, basically Martin Goodman. He's this guy, he founded this company, um, you know, timely comics. Then it became Atlas comics and then it became, um, uh, Marvel comics. Right. And then sometime, I think it was right around 1968, um, yep. Marvel Explosion. Um, during that uh, that time, right after Seduction of the Innocent. Oh, yeah, I forget his name. I know you're talking ah, about it. Turn on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, right after that, um, a lot of uh, these companies went out of business. People didn't want comic books anymore. The distributor for Marvel went out of business. So they had to actually have this agreement with National Periodicals to put out their comic books. Uh, Frederick Wortham. Thank you, Grayman. Um, so they had, that's why they had like the, the combo books, right? Like tales of suspense, tales to astonish all that um, because of that limitation and how many books they would allow them to put out. I think it started with eight and then it kind of slowly went up from there. Anyways, after that uh, they sold to a company called cadence back in like 1968. When they sold to when Goodman sold to Ca the cadence, this corporate company, um, he took at the Atlas name with him. Um, like a year or so later, um, he started his own company called Seaboard Periodicals. Mm -hmm. And they're going to base out of New York or something like that. Yep. It, it was based in, I want to say, um, they were based in Manhattan, um, not Times Square, though. Yeah. It was definitely like very centralized, right? Good spot. Yeah. Um, kind of where, where the other companies were, too. But he had all these connections. Like he had like a ton of like names of these people. So he pulled over um, uh, Larry Lieber. Yep. You know, is related to Stan Lee, right? Yep. Um, this guy named Jeff Rovin came over. Um, he reached out to uh, Roy Thomas and said, hey, do you want to be the editor in chief of this new company? Roy said, no, thanks. Um, but one of the, he did it anyways, pulling in all these people. And um, they wanted to just start this upstart company, you know, kind of like, Kind of like what Image did. He wanted to be the Image Comics of the early 70s, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, this young upstart, you know, pulling in all this crazy talent. Um, what they did actually was uh, they had some of the best page rates around. They were paying really well. So they were pulling in people for these books like Neil Adams, um, Howard Chaikin, who was really new, um, Mike Sikowski, who I want to talk about in a second because it's pretty funny, something that he did. A um, bunch of other people, Rich Buckler, um, Wally Wood. Yeah, um, Steve Ditko, Ditko yeah. also. Yep. So a lo lot of big name people. Um, actually, uh, for Howard Shaken, um, there's a book called The Scorpion. First mm -hmm. issue of that one of my favorites of these. So that's one to look for. But um, unfortunately, it was a really tough time in the early '70s. Um, the the market, you know, um, newsstand market was kind of diminishing. There was like the paper. Prices were increasing, you know, the oil, you know, crisis was happening. All the stuff was happening. Um, that's why that was the time of the test beds for the direct sales market because they were trying to, like, find an alternate way to kind of make this still viable. So come 1975, they uh, had to go out of business. 
because it just didn't work. This whole business plan didn't work. So from 1970 to 1975, all these people, uh, they tried to do a good like 23, I think it was, um, different titles. Um, none of them got higher than four issues. Nope. All of them were like one issue, two issue, three issues. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty funny. Um, but I mentioned Mike Sikowski. Um, it was a couple of years ago, I think it was. I was talking to Keith Giffen at a convention. Um, I was actually getting him to sign some uh, Lobo books, which he's really famous for, right? Um, the Lobo books. Yeah. Um, and with, he was talking about like how we put like these little like hidden things in, in some of the panels, you know, just because it's Lobo and that's crazy. So then I was telling him about um, one of our friends here in the community when he was working on G.I. Joe and that issue with the Cobra salute, right? And how that got through. So then he was telling me about um, Mike Sikowski, um, who actually, he, he did, a, he, he may not know his name. A lot of people may not be familiar with him, but he, he's huge. He actually was the, um, one of the creative team with Gardner Fox on Brave and the Bold, right? Created the Justice League. Brought over the Adam Green Arrow, um, Hawkman over to you know that that roster, um, tons of other stuff too. Anyway, so he um, after that um, went over to work on a book with this new company, Atlas. It's called The Brute, and um, he got into this thing with <laughs> with Martin Goodman. Learned his book was going to be canceled, and he was pissed off about. It. He was like, yeah, "What can I do?" Um, so to get back at him. What he did in that issue was he wrote there was an airplane that was flying away and he wrote on the side of it 5h17 you just look at it real quick it, it doesn't look like anything but if you kind of pull it away a little bit or like you know kind of look at it for a minute mm -hmm. it's it's the word shit. so he got that through through the publishers through the comics code people um basically him getting back at Martin Goodwin was writing shit on the side of an airplane in the in the brute, so <laughs> it was pretty funny. So that was a story that Keith, Keith Giffen told me about that, um, which I think is pretty funny. That's awesome. Um, yeah, he he did a bunch of uh, Sikowski, a bunch of other stuff. I think he worked on um, um, Young Allies, like back in the Golden Age, and he did like uh, Ziggy Pig, which actually, yeah, see, five H one Um He did a uh, Ziggy Pig, which kind of had her. Um, something that came out pretty recently. So do, do you know much about many of the titles? Like what would you recommend for some of these? Um, I don't, I don't know a ton. I, I know. Um, yeah. I mean, just because there's not a lot that, that, you know, was, I mean, they, they had a pretty decent um, amount of titles, but they just didn't have mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of um, issues that, that went through. Yeah. Um, it was one, four I, at most. So they didn't get a lot of traction, you know? Yeah. Like I've seen, I've seen the Scorpion. I've also yep. seen um, uh, Moloch two thousand one. Uh, okay. And it's just like it's. It, I haven't seen two. Like I, I've seen actually. It was funny. There was um an Instagram um seller that was basically just selling these off, and it's just like it's one of those things where if you didn't research it, you, like you might look at it and like, so what are these reprints? Like what, Atlas. <laughs> Most people don't remember Atlas. I mean, if, they, if you follow the history of Marvel, it's like oh Atlas. That's what they were called way back in the day. Exactly. Um, That's why I wanted to clear that up with kind of telling that that timeline story that it's um, it's not the same Atlas. It's not Marvel. It is Martin Goodman, but he left Marvel and he took the name with him. It was Atlas Comics published yep. by Seaboard Periodicals. Yeah. A lot of people call it Atlas Seaboard just to make the distinction. But I wanted to tell that story to make that clarification that they are different. You know, uh, the, the funny thing, too, is, uh, you know, as much as they want to be like, you know, as much as it's like, all right, it's its own thing. You know, if you look at some of the covers and, and just how it everything, I mean, it's very, very, it makes sense that some people might think about like, oh, like, so yeah, maybe these are, you know, some type of, you know, maybe Bronze Age, like revival of, of the old Atlas comics just because right. the way that the logo, the, the way that the actual books are set up, um, the Atlas logo doesn't look anything like it, but it's just like the way they did the covers. I mean, it, like if you didn't know any better. Well, they they did the yellow strip on the top. Yeah, I mean, kind of like it, Marvel comics, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. And it it just seemed like like I mean like you could tell that these guys either worked at Marvel or I uh, just had that style, and it was just like okay, so mm -hmm. so it was very 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 similar, and um you know it's it's really I mean it's one of those things where I think that if you don't know the history, if you don't know much about it, you know you would just see those and pass them by, and it's kind of funny that like you know 
those actually have being uh, like that stuff's being op- options, you know, are picked up for movies and stuff. And it's, it's going to be funny mm-hmm. to people trying to, you know, if they're into speculation, if they're into collecting those type of things, trying to get some of these books. Because I bet you they're not as easy to find as you think. Yeah, I mean, this speaks to the fact that you see it with Netflix and you see it with all these companies, um, IP farming, like yeah. trying to get out all you know, tell this content. You know, there's a ton of great stuff out there. All the big obvious stuff is basically picked up now. So now they're reaching out to these more, let's call it esoteric uh, properties. Um, there's one that I really like. Um, it's a magazine format, um, very much like uh, Conan of the time, mm-hmm. right? It's yeah. called Devilina. Devilina. I was um, like, Wolf was the um, Wolf is the uh, what's it called, Thor, kind of. Mm-hmm. Book. Yeah. Um, so this one was really cool. Uh, only a couple issues, really. Um, and uh, it would have done well, but you know, you had Conan, you had all this other dark fantasy stuff at at the time, and it was like borderline, like oversaturated. So it, it didn't do well. But I think that that would be a property um, that would be cool to look for. Um, also, Grim Ghost. I'll yeah. just name a few of them. Um, Devilina, I said, um, Demon Hunter. I think you mentioned that, right? Uh, Demon Hunter, and then I yeah. said, that. Oh, I see. Gray Man said Demon Hunter. Yep. Um, the Brute, I mentioned. Um, Iron Jaw is cool. Yep. Um, you also have, um, Sergeant Hawk. He was in a book called, um, what was it? Uh, Blazing, Blazing Battle Tales, was it? Is that yep. right? Yeah. Yep. Um, Scorpion, I mentioned. Um, mm-hmm. Savage Combat Tales is cool. You had this guy named Sergeant Striker in there. Um, so those are kind of the big, oh, Tiger Man as well. That's another big one. Um, then a couple of them were actually, um, so don't forget that. That was a, that was a cool looking one, too. Which one? Planet of Vampires. Oh, right. Yeah. I think, yeah, you said that in there, too. Cool. Um, what was the one? I can't remember. There was a couple of these that actually were inspired by, uh, inspired Marvel, I should say. Um, they, they put out a couple books based on some of these characters. So, um, yeah, so definitely check them out. Be on the lookout for them. I would say, um, you could probably pick them up still really cheap. Um, and there are only a couple issues, you know, so it's not going to be too crazy. The only one that's going to be really crazy and it's not a comic book, it's a magazine. Um, and it's super rare. Um, it's actually called my secret. Um, and uh, it's got like, you know, like the sex junkie sort of cover on this chick with like a Captain America shirt. But so that's uh, the f- first issue. The second issue, there's actually right now, it probably more come out of the woodwork now that this is uh, announced. But there's actually one known to have survived and is still in existence. Only one copy of that left out there. So that's my secret. It's a magazine issue number two. So that's probably the the absolute rarest of all of the um, it's all big. of the Atlas board issues. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah, sleepy reader. Uh, what's up? He says, I guess the the thing about Atlas is that it was never linked into a shared universe. Yeah, that's kind of like the uh, the uh, story style du jour seems like, right? Yeah, um, but it makes sense though, just because they were just coming out. So they, I mean, they didn't have a lot of time really to link everything all together but yeah think- when, when you're doing like one or two issues at best <laughs> um yeah. you know there's not a whole lot of like build up there um, is- there's another one that's super rare it's called um what's it called uh gothic romances that's it, i believe it's a magazine format but it's still um um it's still seaboard so yeah. still same company that's- so again I, I i think that actually kind of helps them too that is not shit that you can kind of go with movies that will, you know, kind of stick with them, just the, the book itself. So, you know, you don't have to worry about, I mean, they could connect them, I guess, but there's so many different stories and genres. It'd be a tough task. So I think that yeah. it's going to be cool to see them, you know, kind of some of the stuff come out. And then, um, you know, if you were a collector of that stuff, or if you, you know, and you like that stuff from back in the day, I mean, it's kind of fun to see it kind of come out. And they, they did try to have kind of a resurgence of, uh, you know, kind of to bring you back. back. Yeah. Um, I think it was like in 2000. Or so. Sorry. Yeah. But we're yeah. talking about the Scorpion, Howard Chaikin. Yep. He, that the inspiration for Dominic Fortune was the Scorpion, right? Yep. So that, that's what I was trying to think of. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there's not a whole lot. There's 23 um, titles 
and uh, one, two, three, four at most <laughs> issues of each one. So you do the math on that. And it's, it's not, except for the incredibly rare issues, like the one I was talking about with this only one, um, it's not going to be like an immense task, especially now that we have like, you know, eBay and stuff. So um, wow. should be out there. Check your dollar bins though. Um, look, look for these, you know, if, if you're so inclined. And like we said, there, there's a whole variety of genres. Like there's, there's cops and robbers, there's war, there's horror. Um, all times stuff, superhero, you know. Um, but I really think I, I would really like to see um the devilina um as made into something, right? Yeah. Sister of Satan, you know, that was more of the magazine size format one, but hey, it still counts. 